It's about two billion people all over the world that looks like us, but their lives are a lot harder. Wakanda has the tools to liberate them all. And what tools are those? Vibranium. The film opens with a voice from a young boy, asking his father to tell him a story. The adult's voice tells the story of Vibranium. A gigantic meteorite with the toughest metal, Vibranium, crashed in the regions of the sources of the Nile River, millions of years ago, and it affected the plants. Later, in the age of humans, five tribes in the land named Wakanda battled for control of that Vibranium, until a spirit led a certain warrior to find and eat a heart-shaped herb, affected by the metal Vibranium. He gained superhuman abilities, and became the first Black Panther. Four of the five tribes submit to his power except the Jabari tribe wants freedom. The Wakandans use the Vibranium to develop highly advanced technology. They see the horrors of the other nations and isolated themselves from the rest of the world. They hid and pretended that they are not industrially developed like a third world country. In 1992, King Tichaka visits his brother Njobu, who is working undercover in Oakland, California. Tichaka accuses Njobu of assisting black market arms dealer Ulysses Klau in stealing vibranium from Wakanda. Njobu's partner reveals he is Zuri, another undercover Wakandan, and confirms Tichaka's suspicions. He confronts Njobu, who becomes angry and threatens to kill Tichaka's loyal friend, Zuri. Tichaka reluctantly kills Njobu to save Zuri, and abandons Njobu's son Eric in order to prevent the Wakandan people from learning the truth. In the present day, T'Challa returns to Wakanda to assume the throne after one week, following T'Chaka's death at the hands of Helmut Zemo, disguised as a masked James Barnes. After working with Okoye, the leader of the all-female fighting force the Dora Milaje, to extract his ex-lover Nakia from an undercover assignment in Nigeria's Sambisa forest. He reunites with his mother Queen Ramonda, and younger sister Princess Shuri, the nation's current technological genius. Later at his kingship ceremony, to formally induct him as the king, T'Challa drinks the liquid that removes his enhanced strength and formally invites anyone to challenge his claim as king in ritual combat. The challenger to step forward Mbaku, the leader of the mountain-dwelling Jabari tribe, who claims that T'Challa is not worthy of being king. The two engage in ritual combat, and even without his strength, T'Challa manages to best him and spares his life. T'Challa is crowned the new king and drinks a fluid derived from the heart-shaped herb. As his body digests the herb, T'Challa goes into a deep sleep, where he visits the ancestral plane and reunites with a vision of his father, who advises him he is a good man but also warns him that he has hard times ahead and should surround himself with people he trusts. With this T'Challa wakes up from his dream. At the same time in London, a gang led by Klau and including an ex-US Black Ops soldier, Eric Stevens aka Killmonger, steals an ancient Wakandan vibranium axe from a museum. When Wakanda hears of Klau's actions and receives word that Klau has resurfaced in South Korea, T'Challa's friend Wakabi, who lost his parents as a result of the dealer's actions, urges the young monarch to bring him to justice. Before the mission, T'Challa meets with Shuri, who has developed a number of impressive technology, including sound-absorbent shoes, as well as modifications to the Black Panther suit. It is disguised as a necklace and it absorbs each hit it takes and turns it into kinetic energy. T'Challa, Okoye, and Nakia plan to intercept Klau at an underground casino in Busan, where he will be selling the stolen artifact to an unknown buyer. However, the plan goes wrong when T'Challa discovers the buyer is CIA agent Everett Ross and Klaus suspects the deal is a setup. As a result, the Dora Milaje are forced to sabotage the operation, inciting a shootout. When Klaus attempts to escape, T'Challa, Ross, Shuri, Nakia, and Okoye intercept him in a car chase across the city. T'Challa follows in his suit while Shuri rides a car through a projection back home that operates an actual car that T'Challa rides on. Klau ultimately crashes, and T'Challa comes close to killing him. But after watching civilians filming him, he is forced to decide against it and hands him into the custody of the CIA. Ross interrogates Klau while T'Challa and Okoye listen in through a device T'Challa planted on Ross. Klau reveals to Ross what he previously didn't know about Wakanda and all that it contains. Outside, Killmonger and his crew set up explosives behind a wall. Nakia sees this on security cameras and runs to warn everyone, but the villains blow open the wall. 
they start shooting, and Ross pushes Nakia out of the way, taking a bullet in the back. Killmonger takes Klaue away, and T'Challa notices a ring around Killmonger's neck similar to one that belonged to his grandfather. Rather than pursue Klaue, T'Challa decides to take Ross, who has been severely injured while protecting Nakia. Ross is given something to keep him stabilized until they return to Wakanda, where Shuri can use the nation's advanced technology to save him. The villains head to a plane that Killmonger wants to take to Wakanda. Klau takes Killmonger's girlfriend as a hostage since he has other plans, but Killmonger kills the woman himself before shooting Klau. He tells Killmonger they won't let him into Wakanda, until he reveals a tattoo on his lip that most Wakandans have. He then shoots Klau dead. Back in Wakanda, Wakabi expresses disappointment with T'Challa for failing to bring in Klau. At the same time, Ross is being tended to by Shuri, who uses vibranium to heal his wounds. T'Challa then goes to find Zuri and ask him why Killmonger had his grandfather's ring. Zuri is then forced to admit what he knew about Njobu. In a flashback to 1992, we see that Njobu had stolen the vibranium to spread it to other people of African descent so that they may fight back against their oppressors. Njobu turned his gun on Zuri, and T'Chaka stepped in and killed Njobu with his claws. It filled T'Chaka with great regret, and they left his son, Eric, behind. The boy was on the courtyard when this happened, and he later found his father's body. Eric would go on to become a black ops soldier who earned the nickname Killmonger due to his high body count, which is evident by the marks on his body for everyone he's ever killed. Killmonger enters Wakanda with Klaus' corpse. He presents it to Wakabi, who escorts Killmonger to the palace. Killmonger reveals his true name, Njadaka, and that he is Njobu's son. Wakabi confirms it to everyone when he shows them Killmonger's ring. He announces his intention to claim the throne, challenging T'Challa for the throne in ritual combat. Deciding Killmonger has a legitimate claim, the ritual combat begins. With everyone gathers for the challenge by the falls once again, with T'Challa relinquishing his powers for ritual combat. Killmonger fights brutally and almost easily overpowers T'Challa. Zuri steps in to try and save T'Challa, knowing it is with him that Killmonger should hold a grudge. Killmonger fatally impales Zuri, and he defeats T'Challa and hurls him over a waterfall, to the horror of Ramonda, Shuri, and Nakia, where he is presumed dead. Thus, Killmonger is made king. After ingesting the heart-shaped herb to gain the powers of the Black Panther, Killmonger orders everyone to burn a garden of heart-shaped herbs for future kings, but Nakia manages to sneak one away with her. Nakia, Shuri, Ross, and T'Challa's mother Ramonda flee to seek the aid of the Jabari tribe in the mountains. They speak to M'Baku and ask for his help and learn M'Baku's men are caring for the comatose T'Challa, whom they had rescued in repayment for sparing M'Baku's life. Ramonda grounds the, the heart-shaped herb into a drink to feed T'Challa, brought by Nakia, before they bury him in the snow that he rests upon. T'Chaka returns to the ancestral plane again and meets the spirit of his father, who tells his son it's time to let go and join him and his ancestors. T'Challa demands to know why Eric was left as an orphan in the US when he should have been brought home to his people. T'Chaka claims he did what he did for his people and Wakanda to allow them to remain in isolation, but T'Challa angrily rejects this and states that they cannot hide from the rest of the world forever. He then tells his father's spirit he will not join them but will return to stop the monster his people created from sitting on the throne. T'Challa then wakes up and requests Umbaka's help in fighting Killmonger, but he refuses. Killmonger, supported by Wakabi and his army, enacts his father's plan. Killmonger prepares shipments of Wakandan weapons to be distributed to Wakandan operatives around the world, that of which includes New York City, London, and Hong Kong. As one of their jets flies overhead, it is shot down by T'Challa, making his return as Black Panther. T'Challa challenges Killmonger for the throne, which was never officially concluded since T'Challa never died or conceded. When Killmonger refuses to cooperate, his claim to the throne is immediately invalidated, and Okoye and the Dora Milaje turn against him. However, Killmonger who is now wearing a suit of Black Panther armor of his own, resists with force along with the border tribe. Wakabi and his army charge against T'Challa, but he blasts them away with his kinetic energy. Okoye then leads the Dora Milaje into battle. 
Shuri gives Ross access to a jet to shoot down the planes carrying the weapons before they can leave the Wakanda. Ross is able to shoot them all down. Nakia joins Shuri and Okoye as they fight Killmonger, as he easily overpowers the Dora Milaje with the new suit. Wakabi unleashes armored rhinos into the battle. The battle goes poorly for T'Challa's side until M'Baku and the Jabari arrive to support him. One of the rhinos nearly runs down M'Baku until Okoye steps in. She forces Wakabi and his soldiers to surrender. Before Killmonger comes close to murdering Shuri, T'Challa saves her and tackles Killmonger into the Great Mound. T'Challa and Killmonger's battle carries them into the heart of the Vibranium Mine. While T'Challa and Killmonger v for supremacy, sonic disruptors used in the transport of the metal in the mine incapacitate their Vibranium armors. T'Challa uses this to his advantage, and overpowers Killmonger, impaling him with his own short spear. Now vulnerable and dying, Killmonger expresses regret over not seeing how beautiful Wakanda really is. T'Challa carries Killmonger out of the mine to see the sunset, which Njobu had described to him as a sight to behold. T'Challa offers Killmonger a chance to be healed, but he declines, knowing he would only be in prison afterwards. Killmonger requests to be buried at sea with his ancestors, as they knew death was better than bondage. He pulls the spear out of his chest and dies peacefully. With that victory, T'Challa is officially restored to the throne, with M'Baku granted a seat in the National Tribal Council to represent his tribe in recognition of his loyalty. T'Challa brings Shuri to Oakland outside Killmonger's old apartment. Rejecting the isolationism of past Wakandan kings, T'Challa reveals he bought the building, as well as two buildings next to it so that he may establish a Wakandan embassy in the United States, that Nakia and Shuri will spearhead. He then brings down their jets so that the kids in the courtyard may see and be in awe of. One of the boys then approaches T'Challa and asks him who he is. In mid credit scene, T'Challa is joined by Nakia, Shuri, and Okoye at the United Nations. He announces his plan is to reveal Wakanda's resources to the world, and to come out of isolation in the hope that they may work together with the rest of the world. In post credit scene, three Wakandan children are looking upon someone in a hut. Shuri orders them to not bother the person. Bucky Barnes steps out of the hut, and is met by Shuri, who begins to help him with his recuperation from his mental programming. You know what? I think I'll just take these, bring them over here, and hold on for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. 